Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us at 7 o'clock. I'm Tracy McCain. And I'm Caitlin Nuclo. You're watching Eyewitness News here on The Wax. A lot to talk about, but first, we want to get a quick check on that forecast. We'll say yeah. good morning to meteorologist Jill Gillardi. We look like details. a Christmas sandwich. I was, you We're stole all... it out of my you know, mouth. I was yeah. like, yeah. I'm going to say good morning, Christmas. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait. Weren't you doing a countdown? Like, relax. yeah, just yesterday. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> this will be, hopefully, we get snow this year on Christmas. I know. So we can have, like, for my family at least. Well, yeah, because yeah, your kids probably really want to see snow. Yeah. Right? Like really I really badly. want to see snow too. <laughs> I'm like a little kid always, you know, I'm always for the snow. Uh, but right now I'm for the rain. Uh, my garden is like watering every single day practically. At least it's not, you know, it wasn't as windy yesterday, so the evaporation process. You know, hopefully it was, you know, well, it was lower, but hopefully it won't need to water, you know, every single day. But nonetheless, today, tomorrow, yeah, you're going to need to. Uh, Thursday, though, that's our day that we might not need to. So hopefully so. But right now, nothing happening on the only live radar in the state. It is bright right now in New Haven. It's 56 degrees there. You go up to the north, though, there is a patch of clouds passing across the state. So it is mostly cloudy, a little depressing in those areas where those clouds kind of linger around. Uh, temperatures are in the upper 40s to low 50s, some mid 50s. So a pretty decent start, uh, pretty close to normal for this time of year. And if you're headed out the door, do some walking this morning. It is uh, a little bit on the cool side, so a long sleeve should do for you or a light jacket. Uh, as we progress through today, not a huge warm up, so very similar to what we saw yesterday. Hopefully we can get some more breaks of sunshine because again, uh, the lack of sunshine just is not very motivating. I don't know about you, but it was a struggle yesterday afternoon and we're expecting these high Highs be a little bit below average too. Town by town, we're going to be enjoying highs in the mid and upper 60s to near 70 degrees. Get out and enjoy it. But we'll talk more about that rain chance coming up in about 10 minutes. For now, let's get an update on traffic with Kaylin. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Jill. Good morning, everyone. Let's get you a check on those roads here at 703 on the Wax. The majority of the state actually looking fairly, fairly normal. We've got some. Um, actually not doing too bad 84 eastbound heading towards Hartford 33 minute ride time there New Haven to the George Washington Bridge 95 southbound we're just past that 100 minute ride time so uh, well past the hour and a half ride if you're traveling 95 southbound the parkway backing up more substantially but we are crashing incident free uh, that daytime construction work will pick up just about 8 39 o'clock this morning you can see live look outside in Vernon here 84 east and westbound here's live look in middle tunnel on route 9 that sun is nice and bright through this area as well Live look in Waterbury, 84 east and westbound here, and really bright sunshine in Meriden, 691 east and westbound. So that sun glare could be a little bit of an issue for you, depending on where you're traveling. Grab the sunglasses as you're heading out the door. I'm Caitlin Francis with your Connecticut Chevy First Alert Traffic Report, driven by your Connecticut Chevy dealers. All right, we are on top of breaking news in Hartford, where a person was shot overnight on Park Street. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Olivia Schuler is live in Hartford this morning with the latest details. So, Olivia, what are police telling us this morning? Tracy and Caitlin, Park Street is now reopened after Hartford police spent the better part of the morning investigating after a man in his 20s was shot. Fortunately, he is now being treated for at an area hospital in stable condition. We know that a shot spotter notification is what alerted police around 235 this morning. Now, when Hartford police got to the scene there, they found a victim suffering from non -thre life threatening gunshot wounds. Fortunately, the victim is listed in stable condition. It's unclear if police have a suspect in custody. This is what the scene looked like this morning. You can see that a police cruiser and caution tape blocked off a large section of Park Street. Park Street between Madison Avenue as well as Greenwood Street were cautioned taped off. However, that has clearly cleared completely, so that is no longer a concern for people who are commuting this morning. Now, Hartford Major Crimes has taken over this investigation. We do want to reiterate that a person in their 20s, a man is in stable condition in the hospital after being shot earlier this morning. Any new information will update you here on the WFSB News app. We're live in Hartford. Olivia Schuler, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. In New Haven, the release of new body camera footage of law enforcement fatally shooting a man in West Haven has prompted a massive investigation. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Marcy Jones has the latest. 
Well, any time there is a loss of life, of course it's tragic, but the investigation following gets even more intense when there are law enforcement officers involved, and that's exactly why experts we spoke to said this could be a very long process. Now, take a look at this video. Police say 36-year-old Jabrell Conley of New Haven had an outstanding warrant for his arrest in connection with an armed robbery. That's why they tracked him down and approached him at a West Haven car wash Thursday afternoon. Body camera footage shows the confrontation intensifies quickly. According to investigators, Conley backed his car into a police cruiser, then pulled a gun on officers as they asked him repeatedly to get out of the car. The initial report says Conley fired his gun, shattering the car window. Then the gun jammed, and law enforcement officers, two from New Haven Police Department and one from Connecticut State Police, returned fire, killing Conley. Now experts say this is the time to leave no stone unturned to make sure all evidence is considered. What's important to note is the, the state police major crime squad, uh, I believe from Central District, will respond, collect all the evidence, interview all the witnesses, along with the inspector general's people, and, and really analyze everything that took place that tragic night. The full investigation from the inspector general's office could take up to a year to complete. In the meantime, we know that those two New Haven police officers who were involved have been placed on administrative leave. We have not confirmed yet if that is the same case for the Connecticut State Police trooper who was involved as well. In New Haven, Marcy Jones, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Well, the man who pleaded guilty for seriously injuring a Farmington police officer will appear in court again today. Pedro Acevedo was stealing catalytic converters when police blocked him in. Officer James O'Donnell then got out of his vehicle and raised his weapon. And that's when police say Acevedo pinned him between two cars, crushing his pelvis. Acevedo pleaded guilty to multiple charges, including felony assault. A Hartford basketball coach has been found guilty of sexually assaulting a child that he was hosting at a hotel for a basketball tournament. Police arrested 33-year-old Danny Lawhorn back in 2021. He'll be sentenced in November. Well, right now we know a man in his 20s is in stable condition after someone shot him last night in Hartford. Police rushed to the scene and found him near Seams Street or Seamus Street. Investigators are still trying to figure out what led up to the violence. Well, this morning, the man who pled guilty for dealing a deadly dose of fentanyl at the Mohegan Sun Casino will be sentenced. Gerard Santiago gave 22-year-old Ethan Berwani a substance laced with fentanyl. This happened back in 2021. Berwani collapsed and then later died. Santiago did plead guilty to two counts of distributing controlled substances. Right now, two men are out on bond after investigators say they participated in a street takeover that spanned from Connecticut to New York. Bridgeport police rushed to deal with a group of 100 motorcycle riders that they say were being led by a pickup truck driving erratically on 95 Saturday night. Police in New York pulled the pickup truck driver over and that led to these arrests. 26-year-old Sean Puglia of West Haven and 28-year-old Riley Lewis of North Haven, both of them now facing multiple charges and will appear a court in court next week. Avon residents, watch your mail. The town says residents have been receiving fake mail saying they're not registered to vote. Officials believe those notices are coming from Texas and say to call the town clerk if you have any questions about your voter registration status. Well, Southington town leaders have approved tax breaks for fallen first responders and their families. The new law eliminates personal property taxes up to $10,000 for their surviving spouse. The decision comes after Southington resident trooper Aaron Pelletier was killed in the line of duty in May. This ordinance will help fallen police officers, firefighters, and EMT families. Well, more U.S. troops are being deployed to the Middle East after the deadliest day of fighting between Israel and Hezbollah since 2006. Nearly 500 people were killed after the IDF launched missiles attacks on Lebanon. The Pentagon has not said what the U.S. strike group will be doing, but President Biden says he wants to calm the tensions in the Middle East. They are currently 40,000 U.S. troops now serving in the Middle East. Happening today, President Biden's U.N. address will mark his last major appearance on the world stage. 
He will speak with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky about the tensions in the Middle East, including the wars in Gaza, Ukraine, and Lebanon. We'll bring you the key takeaways here on the air and online. It is 710. Good morning, everyone. We're starting to see a little bit more color spreading its way southward. I did take a drive last week down towards Old Saybrook and yeah, down Route 9, you'll start to see some of that color as well. So it is a beautiful out there, a nice fall day. Waterbury right now attracting bright conditions and 53 degrees. It is a little cooler, Salisbury, as well as Norwich in the upper 40s. Otherwise, 50 and uh, in the wind is flowing from the northeast about uh, 5 to 10 miles per hour. For the kiddos out at the bus stop today, they won't need the umbrella. Uh, they will need maybe the, the light jacket this morning with those 50s. It feels cool, but refreshing nonetheless. And then upper 60s this afternoon. Very similar weather than what we exper experienced yesterday. So mainly dry the next two days. Best rain chance still appears to be Thursday. And then moderating temps by the weekend. We'll get into all this in detail coming up in a few minutes from now. All right, everybody, Roger, Suzanne, and here at the First Alert Desk, where we are tracking major developing news in Connecticut's political world. New Britain Mayor Erin Stewart just announced moments ago that she will not be seeking re-election next year. Stewart is one of the biggest Republican names in Connecticut politics. She was elected 11 years ago at the age of 26 and is currently in the midst of her sixth term in office. But again, Mayor Stewart says she will not run for re-election in 2025. Stewart did not say what's next for her politically or personally, but did admit this was an emotional decision. This is an incredibly difficult decision for me to make because of you. I've won each election by larger margins than the last. Unlike most political stories, I've continued to gain your support with our good work. And for that, I say thank you to each and every citizen of this city. Now, we've posted Mayor Stewart's statement on our website as well as the WFSB News app if you'd like to take a look. We'll also have much more on this very big developing story throughout the day here on Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Live at the First Alert Desk, I'm Roger Suzanne. Tracy, I'll send it back to you. All right. Thanks, Raj. That's a big story.